So <clears throat> how does the Argent Wallet works? So basically, as you've seen, it's a mobile application that interacts with a smart contract-based wallet. So basically what happened is that you have a key in your phone, but that key actually has no funds. It's basically act as a remote control for your real wallet, which is a smart contract on-chain. So basically when you make a transaction, your, your key will just sign an intent, and nowadays people call it meta transactions. This is related to the blockchain, and this is, by the way, how we abstract gas. And then finally, the transaction arrives at your smart contract, which will decide if the transaction is legit, is it really the owner of the wallet, is the context correct, and if yes, the transaction will be processed by the wallet. So we are a smart contract-based wallet, and we've, we've taken a an architecture which is a bit different than, than most people. So basically, when you have an Argent wallet, what you have is a very simple contract that we call base wallet. And when I mean simple, it's uh, less than 100 lines. And then we have a set of modules. And each of these modules contains a different piece of the business logic. So for example, if you want to add Guardian, you need to send a transaction to the Guardian manager module, which will check that the concept is valid. Do you have, uh, you know, is it a, a legit Guardian? How many Guardians do you have? Do you have already, already had that Guardian and so on? Uh, all these modules accept meta transaction and actually regular transactions. And what's interesting too is that modules are shared between the different users. So basically there is one module for all the Argent users, but each Argent user as an independent, as its own uh, base wallet contract, which holds its fund and its identity. And so actually if you see in green, that's the flow of a transaction. So when you wanna interact with your wallet, actually you don't interact with the base wallet, you interact with the module, the module will verify authorize the transaction, verify the context, and if yes, we'll instruct the base wallet to, for example, transfer your funds. Why this architecture is interesting is because actually it makes it easy to upgrade. If we wanna add a new functionality to Argent, all we need to do is basically create a new module, and then users can authorize that new module. If for some reason we wanna improve a functionality, we can re remove the old module and then add a new one. So it's really like plugins. You can think of features like plugin to the wallet. What's of course important is that only the owner of the wallet can add or remove a module. So we, Arjun, have no control on that. All we can say is that we can propose modules. And of course, these modules, they need to be authorized by Arjun at some point. And so they are part of what we call the Arjun registry. And then users really on their app will say, okay, I want this feature, I upgrade my wallet. And suddenly the base wallet authorizes a new module to basically interact with it. So it, it's quite cool to, to upgrade and make the wallet evolve. And another reason why we took that road is because actually it's really easy, is maybe not a good word when we speak about auditing solidity, but it's easier to audit. Smart contract, of course, is something that is scary. They tend to be long. It's easy to make mistakes. And so auditing is, of course, critical in terms of security. And having a modular architecture provides good separation of concern because you can reason about the different contract individually. You can reason about the base wallet, it's 100 lines. You can reason about a module, which would be a few hundred lines. And you can just think about that module. So yeah, that, I'm giving you some benchmarks. So yeah, a few hundred lines for the base wallet and 500 lines for uh, modules. So what does it mean for DeFi? Well. What's pretty cool is that when we started integrating DeFi protocol, we basically created new modules. So our, our integration with Maker, we created a custom module that we call Maker Manager. And basically that, that module will orchestrate all that needs to be done uh, with Maker. So it's of course better for the users. As you will see, instead of having to make seven transactions with MetaMask, which can take up to 30 minutes, the user just make one transaction to the module, and then the module will orchestrate all the interaction with the wallet and with Maker. It's also good in terms of security, because if you orchestrate the different interaction, for example, that, that necessary approve that you need to do on a traditional dApps, when you approve 10 to the 59 tokens, well here, the, mo the module can actually just approve the token that you need to approve. And again, so that reduce, uh, that increases security. And as you will, I will show in the end, you can start combining protocols. And for us, of course, that's why we say programmable money, is that it, you can really leverage, I mean, a, a protocol is like a, a financial protocol with open API. We didn't ask Maker, of course we know Maker, but we didn't have to ask them if we could actually integrate Maker. We can build our own smart contract that integrate with Maker. And so you can start do plug and plays with different protocols that I will show in the end. So as Itamar has asked, you know, 
when you open a, a CDP with Maker, you actually need to make seven uh, right transactions. You need to convert your ETH to WET, approve on WET, create your CDP, join your CDP to convert your WET into PET, approve your PET, lock your PET on your CDP, and finally draw your die. So that's like seven transactions just to write. And then of course, you need to make read calls to get some information. For example, what's the, the, the conversion ratio between WET and, and PET? I'm a bit lying because now today Maker has introduced proxy, so actually it is less transaction for the users, but the principle is the same. You do need to make seven transactions and interact with three different contracts. So as a user, this is not something that you, do, you wanna do. And if we think about programmable money, you can imagine these different contracts as, as Legos, Lego bricks. But if you have to interact with them individually, it's like you have Lego bricks, but they don't fit with, with each other. They're not connected. Now if you, start, if you want to do the same thing with Arjun, and this is what Itamar showed when he clicked on open my, my maker CDP, it's basically we, he made one transaction to the maker manager that started to do interaction, interact with the base wallet, interact with the different uh, maker contract, and for the user, that's one transaction. So if you put enough guys, that's like 14 seconds or 30 seconds to be confirmed, and that makes the user happy. So if you come back to that analogy of, of Lego bricks, it's like suddenly we have assembled these Lego bricks to build something new. We have the Argent brick, and then we have three different uh, maker bricks that we have combined to create a new block, something new. That, and uh, we think that this is, of course, pretty cool. Where it gets, to my opinion, even cooler is when you want to close a CDP with maker. For those that have repaid some of their debt or close the CDP, actually you need to have DAI because you need to repay your DAI, but you also need to have maker token to pay the fee to Maker. And most users don't, don't have Maker token. So if we start orchestrating all these calls in the Maker Manager, that means that we can actually swap some Ether for Maker token. And in this case, we do that with Uniswap. So in one transaction, we interact with Uniswap to get Maker token, to get DAI, and then to close your CDP. So actually, you can close the CDP on Argent, having no DAI and no Maker token, only enough ETH. And again, that makes it much uh, simpler and safer for the user. 